Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. We only have special guests. Today we go to Lucy's home in Los Angeles. Lucy is a special woman. If you read her biography, wow, she's an interpreter. <laughs> Lucy and I are part of Women Leadership and Beyond. This is a big conference coming up March 9 and 10. Make sure to mark your calendar. All the information will be in the show notes. Sign up if you have any questions. Reach out to anybody, Lucy, Janine, Erica, me, or whoever is the organizer. But Let's focus on Lucy today. Welcome, Lucy. Please introduce yourself. Who is Lucy who's going to join us today? My name is Lucy Ferraz Rivero, and I first want to thank you, Suzanne, for having me on. I really uh, appreciate that. Who are the four, five, six, seven women for women leadership and beyond? Actually, Erica Janine and I were <laughs> sitting at a bar after doing like a nine hour conference and we were just exhausted. And we were talking about the aspects of how men felt that we should speak to women, what men thought that women needed to hear. And we were discussing this and we were laughing and saying, can you imagine a man telling a woman how we should speak to women, what we need to hear? And then one of us said, I can't tell you who, we should just do our own. And we thought about it and it wasn't a crazy idea. So we talked about it further and we said, one of these days, the three of us will be back together and this will be our thing. And it was Maybe five years ago, I probably would not have had that conversation with just anybody. But Janine is someone that, as you know, because I heard you say this in your podcast, you appreciate her. She's a wonderful, she's a rare gem. She's one of those people who just gives and wants to make things better. Erica, the same. And I think that's why Erica, you and I, <laughs> Janine, mm -hmm. sort of connected. There was a lot that we didn't have to say. We just looked at each other. We kind of knew we were on the same page. But now that you're asking me about women leadership and beyond and about the summit, this group of women, like you were saying, how do we get together? The team is in Mexico. Some of us are in Switzerland and the United States. We are very busy building a space. It's sort of a place where we can get together and talk about all these things and not just skim the surface, but actually get deep into some of the things because maybe women weren't feeling comfortable to talk about this with their spouses, let alone the workplace. Let me tell you that when we talk to people at HR, less than 2% of people, not just women, will come to HR and say, I'm having an issue with mental health. <laughs> so at Women Leadership and Beyond, one of the things that I enjoy about what we are building is that we talked and we said, okay, How can we formulate something that's different? Because you don't want to do the same. At Women Leadership and Beyond, we thought, We're not going to be like a one-stop shop you wanna, where you attend a webinar and then never feel that camaraderie again. But here, there's sort of a continuum that we have built in, which we have set a place for everyone at this table. So you can return time and time again because each breakthrough begets a myriad of questions. We may not have all the answers in and of itself. That's part of the beauty that we're building. You just want to share. Mm -hmm. You just want to get some perspective and look at things through fresh eyes. Like maybe at an AA meeting, when you hear all these other people talking about the same things you're going through, even if you don't speak at that moment, you're, you're having an aha moment. You're saying, wow, I'm not the only one this is happening to. Even if, and you mentioned it, right? So it's, we sit at the table, a virtual table. We invite everybody and we plan to have 
coffee meetings, virtual coffee meetings beyond. It's so important to support each other. Some, as you said, 2% of the people go to HR. I used to work in HR. Yes, we need to open up more. We need to have open door policies. It's about helping each other and lifting each other up and encouraging each other to do great work. I want to hear from you. You talk about mental health. People don't know how to react correctly, appropriately. Talking about disability, there's so many disabilities that we don't see. People are depressed, especially in COVID, and people are depressed who live at home, stay at home, work at home. They never get out. This is tough for them. So how can we reach them? How can we help them? What is your talk about? Give us some insight. Don't give everything away because we need the people to come on March 10. No, I absolutely won't give it all away. And just to go back really quick on something you said, that is one of the things I that I like about what you do. You focus on sisterhood. What I mean by that, I'm not saying you can't get that. Look, every time I talk about sisterhood, it doesn't mean anything bad about men. Feminism is not a dirty word. I didn't like fraternity when I talk about it. Sounds like a man. Sounds like a man. (laughs) But I am the first person to say we need to include everybody. I want to make sure when I talk about sisterhood, we need to include everybody. We do, because if we don't include everybody, how good is it for us to keep preaching to the choir? Mm -hmm. Now, we are already well-versed on what's lacking in the workplace or in our home and how we are being treated, not just as women. Let's just take, (laughs) since you mentioned the bad word, COVID, Mm -hmm. let's take that for instance. I have asked about 20 of my closest friends. No, I don't have 20 closest friends. 20 people that I really appreciate Mm -hmm. that are women. How has COVID been for you? Are you getting a break? Are you getting into the bathtub once a week Mm -hmm. and you're doing your nails? Let me just tell you, that's not happening Mm -hmm. for uh, women in COVID. We can call it COVID. (laughs) So we are waking up. In my case, I'll just give you my case. Yeah, that's perfect, yeah. For a lot of women, Uh, you wake up, you go right to the kitchen and you make the juice and you have to make, we are doing juicing every day now for the last four months. So we make the juice, we take our vitamins because we're trying to not get COVID and then we rest. We all go to our computers or our phones and then, oh, it's time for breakfast. You have to make the breakfast, put it all together on the phone. I'm listening to my mom because she lives in Mexico. I can't see her. Get that out of the way, serve the breakfast we eat, and then we go back to work. Soon enough, you have to plan lunch. And then before you know it, can you help me with this or help me with that? And I'm not trying to make it a horrible thing because Mm -hmm. I love it. I happen to love the things I do with my family, for my family. I'm really for my husband and my kids. And I don't think that that makes me a woman of the 70s. It just I enjoy my job. I am a CEO of my company, which I'm proud to say, but it took a long time to get where I am now. What I'm trying to tell you is that by 10 o'clock at night, there's no time or will to sit down and watch television. I mean, you're exhausted Mm -hmm. because you found, I mean, in this COVID time, who hasn't painted their bathroom, their living room, changed their furniture. My husband and I and the kids did everything. One day we all sat on the floor because we have stone floor and it took us two days to scrub with baking soda. We just decided this is something we've always wanted to do and never did. But going to the mental health and why I'm going to be speaking of this on the 10th, let me tell you quickly, I'm a certified interpreter by trade but I'm not a doctor. So let's get that out there now. Mm -hmm. But one day, a long time ago, Suzanne, maybe 15 years ago, maybe more, I was sitting through this incredibly moving symposium and it had to do with mental health. And I became so interested in this subject and I started seeking more. (laughs) I started seeking more jobs on this field. I think this is your (laughs) calling and people need you and you have the experience. And in a way, you can look from the outside in. You're curious. I worked on the OJ Simpson case and we're not allowed to tell you what happens behind those closed doors, but mental health is different. I'm allowed to come and tell you what I know and I'm very happy to do it. Going back to being an interpreter and now going into mental health, you can't imagine what it was like for me to sit through maybe 2000, and I'm being generous, symposiums, sometimes there were summits, conferences, and all of this 
gave me a wealth of information. And then I realized not enough people, not enough laymen like you and me Mm -hmm. are getting the true message. These experts were making huge inroads in mental health, but the information was simply not reaching the masses. It was not getting to the employers. Mm -hmm. Earlier, we were talking about, you know, human resources. Mm -hmm. It's not reaching the academic institutions. They're not treating it as they should. I mean, mental health needs to be looked at from kindergarten to middle school. Even you know, before. Uh, before you start getting to the high school, kids who are talking about suicide, because as you know, kids are talking about suicide a lot sooner. Governments and others were not listening. Their employees are not speaking about mental health. Seven out of 10 employees have indicated in a survey that was done by Ginger. They're a coronavirus disease 2019 COVID group that's running all these researches. Mm -hmm. And they found out that the pandemic is the most stressful time in anybody's professional career. I mean, and we're not even talking about kids. This is a line with the stark increase in prescriptions for antidepressants, anti-anxiety, anti-insomnia. Many of us can't sleep. I include myself in that group. Mm. But here's the thing. 30% of these prescriptions were for the first time. This gives you an idea of what we're going through. I learned that progress on mental health, and I'm sure Suzanne stood stagnant for many years. Mm -hmm. So it was just not talked about in the workplace and it was very badly dealt with in VA hospitals. And I know you have an experience with VA Mm -hmm. and with children who were suffering and were being offered drugs just to stay focused and get the homework done, but they were not dealing with the Mm -hmm. inner issues that were bringing all this up. Many suffer trauma and anxiety and depression and suicide, which by the way, are some of the most common mental health disorders that we're dealing with today. You know how they did in the 60s, there was a huge movement to shut down all the institutions. And luckily they did. The downfall from that was, or the fallout, I guess you should say, is that many of these people became homeless. They were not allowed back into their homes or not able for whatever reason Mm -hmm. to go back. Right now, mental illness is rising in every country. That is why I thought that I should bring this to women leadership and beyond. And something that you probably don't know about me is that I was an editor of a magazine because I was so into parenting. I was editing parenting magazine that was a bilingual format. For the first time, it was in English and Spanish. I always try to throw in there when we had our meetings, something about mental health. And they would say, no, no, no. I didn't push it because I didn't want to lose my job. But one day, someone was supposed to bring in their story and they didn't come through with their byline. And I saw it as an opportunity. And I said, do you want something on mental health? I could probably whip something up. Well, there were six pages to whip up because it was three in English, three in Spanish. And this was my first experience. It was actually my second experience with having a mental health issue, but my first experience with writing about it. And it was great. And it made me feel empowered, but mostly it made me feel like that's it. I have to be a voice for these kids. I I have to do something about this. And that's kind of what drew me more to anxiety, depression, things that I was seeing in children worldwide, which finally is being looked at carefully now because The pandemic has brought it to the forefront and there's no looking away from it now. So even though the pandemic is such a horrible thing for mental health, it's working because now people are looking at schools. They're looking at the workplace like never before, paying attention to mental health. Can't wait to listen to your presentation on March 10, Mental Health, Lucy from LA. Make sure you mark your calendar. So thank you so much, Lucy. This is really great. Antes que nada, gracias, Susan, por darme la oportunidad de hablar en mi idioma, eh, que es el español. Eh, aprendí el inglés primero, pero para mí, en mi corazón, el español es mi primer idioma. Y veo por tu sonrisa que para mm-hmm. ti también. En Women Leadership and Beyond, que realmente significa mujer, liderazgo y más allá, lo que tenemos es un grupo de personas que no solamente vamos a hablar francamente sobre muchos temas que tienen que ver con la mujer, pero también lo vamos a hacer de una forma íntima. Este es un grupo diferente. Vamos a hablar íntimamente sobre cosas que tal vez en el trabajo tú no te sentías tranquila o cómoda de mencionar. Es más, me atrevo a decir 
que muchas hemos mentido sobre si estamos casadas, si tenemos hijos, porque a mí mejor saber a un hombre cuando lo están dando una entrevista para un trabajo, no le preguntan, ¿eres casado? ¿Tienes hijos? ¿Me entiendes? Entonces hay una inequidad increíble, una desigualdad, se nos trata diferente, este, pero no por nuestros dones y por las cosas que, que nosotros podemos aportar. Y lo que queremos hacer en Women Leadership and Beyond es abrir la puerta para todo el mundo, no solo a las mujeres, porque las mujeres ya sabemos lo que aportamos. Mm -hmm. Necesitamos que las personas en las empresas, los hombres, escuchen, mira, esto es lo que tú vas a tener si tú tienes a una mujer encargada o una mujer empleada. Entonces, nos gustaría abrir este diálogo y no solamente dejarlo ahí. Vamos a cerrar con un panel, pero... En los meses entrantes, aparte de que en esas semanas vamos a estar contestando muchos emails porque van a haber incógnitas, ¿verdad? Van a haber preguntas. Nosotros vamos a regresar y tener charlas más pequeñas. Por ejemplo, supongamos que en toda nuestra conferencia de dos días hubieron 100 preguntas sobre Take it from the Iron Woman. Obviamente, el primer café va a ser café con Susan y vamos a contestar esas preguntas y darles más sobre ese tema para que se sientan que tienen unas herramientas. No solo les vamos a dar las experiencias, los problemas, les vamos a dar herramientas de cómo ellas pueden surgir. Estamos ¿Sí? listas. Muchas gracias, Lucy. Gracias a ti. Thank you so much, Lucy. This is going to be a fantastic conference. So mark your calendars, March 9 and 10. Lucy will be talking about mental health. This should not be a stigma. We are opening the doors. We're opening the doors for many. Thank you so much, Lucy. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. There is something for everybody. And Take It From The Iron Woman is also a book. Order it on Amazon. You can learn about my journey from Switzerland to the US, to India, to Kilimanjaro and skydiving. What else? Something for everybody. Don't miss out. Subscribe to your preferred platform. 